If you're standing over a questionable creek right now, here's the truth most people miss. Boiling makes water microbiologically safe, but it does nothing for dissolved chemicals, fuel residues, heavy metals, or salt. Filters physically remove many pathogens and grit, but most consumer models won't stop viruses. Chemicals can inactivate microbes, yet they struggle in cloudy, cold water and won't remove toxins you can't see. By the end of this video, you'll have a simple decision tree to choose the right method for each source, plus a fail-safe way to combine them so you don't lose time or get sick when it matters. Boiling is the gold standard for killing bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. Bring water to a rolling boil. At most elevations, that's sufficient. But boiling cannot remove dissolved contaminants. If your source is tainted with pesticides, fuel, or metals, you can't boil those out. In some cases, you may actually concentrate certain volatile compounds if you boil aggressively with a lid trapping vapors. The win, boil for biological safety. The limit, no chemical removal. Field filters, hollow fiber or ceramic, work by size exclusion. Typical backpacking filters around 0.1, 0.2 microns remove protozoa, like Giardia, and bacteria very effectively. And they dramatically improve clarity and taste when paired with the carbon stage. The catch is viruses. Most viruses are much smaller, so unless you're using a purifier or a filter specifically designed to meet viral standards, you should assume viruses can pass. Carbon improves taste and can reduce some organics and odors, but it's capacity limited and does not purify everything. Chemical treatments, such as chlorine dioxide drops or tablets and iodine in some products, are lightweight, inexpensive, and great backups. They inactivate bacteria and viruses well when used as directed, but performance against protozoa depends on concentration, contact time, and temperature. Cold water slows chemical reactions. Cloudy water shields microbes inside particles. Clear the water first and extend contact time in cold conditions. Iodine adds taste, has usage limitations, and is less reliable against certain protozoa. Chlorine dioxide is often preferred for its broader spectrum and better taste profile. UV purifiers disrupt microbial DNA in clear water. They're fast and effective when the water is low turbidity, and you follow volume and stirring instructions. They don't leave residual protection, they don't remove chemicals, and they depend on batteries. Think of UV as a speed tool for clear sources, not a cure-all. Start with one question. What's the most likely threat? Microbes, chemicals, or both? Then look at clarity. For a clear, fast-moving mountain stream with little human or livestock impact, a 0.1, 0.2 micron filter or a rolling boil is typically sufficient. If you're near crowded camps, popular trails, or downstream from settlements, add a virus control step. After filtering, use chlorine dioxide as directed. If fuel is scarce or time is short, filter plus chemical may beat boil alone. For silty rivers or glacial melt, settle the water first. Scoop, let it rest 30-60 minutes, then decant from the top through a cloth or coffee filter. Run that clarified water through your field filter. If you suspect higher viral risk, follow with chemical. Boiling is a powerful secondary step for biologic safety here, especially in very cold conditions where chemicals slow down. Use a carbon element if taste is rough or if you want minor reduction in organics. For ponds near farms, ditches, or urban runoff, assume uncertainty. Filter with a fine element. Add carbon for taste and some organic reduction, then finish with chemical or boil for biological safety. If you see or smell petroleum, suspect industrial discharge, or the water has an unnatural sheen or color, the correct move may be to avoid the source entirely. Recreational treatment methods are not designed to make chemically contaminated water safe. During a post-disaster boil water advisory, follow the notice. Boil or use a virus-capable method. If you have a filter, run water through it first to reduce turbidity then boil or chemical treat. Carbon can help taste if infrastructure recovery leaves residual chlorine or odd flavors. For snow and ice, melt first, 
then treat. Boiling is straightforward. Filter plus chemical also works if you're protecting fuel. Remember that snow is mostly air. Plan your fuel budget accordingly. For brackish or salt water, none of these methods desalinate. You need distillation or reverse osmosis. If you can't remove salt, don't drink it. Filter, then chemical, is the classic two-step in populated or uncertain environments. The filter clears particulates and removes protozoa and most bacteria. The chemical finishes viruses and any bacteria that might have slipped through damaged fibers. Filter, then boil, is strong for cold or turbid sources when you want a guaranteed microbial kill without waiting on long chemical contact times. UV comes into play when the water is already clear. Pre-filter if needed. Follow the device directions precisely and don't rely on UV for murky sources. Carbon fits anywhere. Taste, odor, or minor organics are a problem. Just remember capacity and replace on schedule. Think in layers. Mechanical clarity, biological inactivation, taste improvement. One method rarely covers all three perfectly. Two methods cover nearly all field scenarios with margin for error. The number one myth is that boiling purifies everything. It does not remove dissolved contaminants. Another repeated failure is using chemicals in cloudy water. Particles protect microbes. You must clarify first or you're dosing blind. Hollow fiber filters are vulnerable to freezing once they've been wetted. Ice expansion can rupture fibers internally without visible damage. If a filter might have frozen, treat it as compromised and switch to a second method. Contact time is not a suggestion. Colder water, increase the weight per the product label. Rushing the clock is how people get sick. Cross-contamination is another silent failure. Don't dip dirty bottle threads into your clean water. Don't set clean lids in the mud and don't backwash with untrusted water. Finally, container choice matters. Don't put non-boil-safe plastics over flame, and don't boil with a fully sealed lid. Small details prevent big problems. For a turbid source, run this sequence. Scoop and let settle. Pour off the clearer top through a cloth into a wide mouth bottle, then push or pump through a 0.1, 0.2 micron filter. If viral risk is on your mind, crowded camp, downstream of a village, Dose with chlorine dioxide and give it the full labeled time, longer if the water is cold. In deep winter, keep your chemical bottle and filter in inner layers so they don't freeze. Chemicals work better warm, and filters survive longer if you prevent ice formation. If you must boil, bring to a rolling boil and save fuel by avoiding long simmer times. Use carbon after your primary treatment if taste and odor are rough. It makes drinking enough water easier which matters for performance and decision-making. Maintain your gear as if your next drink depends on it, because it does. Backflush filters at the end of the day. Keep track of any freeze events. Let gear dry when possible, and store carbon sealed and dry so it doesn't absorb humidity on the shelf. Label chemicals with the date you opened them and replace before the shelf life expires. If you're building a 72-hour kit on a budget, Carry a 0.1 micron squeeze or pump filter, chlorine dioxide tablets, a small metal pot or cup for boiling, a bandana or coffee filters for pre-clarifying, and one hard wide mouth bottle that can handle hot water. This gives you mechanical removal, chemical inactivation, and a heat option. Three independent paths to safe water. The next upgrade is an inline carbon element for taste and minor organics, an ultraviolet pen for fast treatment of clear water, and a second bottle so you can designate dirty and clean without confusion. For groups, a gravity filter saves time at camp. For solo speed, a squeeze system is light and efficient. Redundancy is not luxury here. Two independent treatment methods per person is the standard, because the first failure often shows up when you're cold, tired, and far from help.